in Saint the Mirage, and it's a historic day in Trinidad and Tobago, as in just one hour, the nation will welcome the first woman to hold the highest office in the land. President-elect Justice Paula May Weeks will take the oath of office, becoming the sixth president of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome to Understanding the Presidency. In this segment, we seek to examine the history, legacy, role, and function of the president as we journey from Sir Ellis Clark to the outgoing His Excellency, President Anthony Carmona. Well, now joining us this morning to discuss further the role of the president, along with Dr. Ghani, is educator, advocate of culture, gender, sensitive leadership, and author of Through the Political Glass Ceiling, Dr. Chris Rampasad. Dr. Rampasad, welcome. Well, we were discussing before you came in the role and function of the president. And one of the things we, we I want to discuss is the powers of the president. How powerful or what powers does the, pre the, does the president really have? We, has his role changed? We talked about him being considered just a figurehead at one point. But then remember Arthur N. R. Robinson and during the 1818 stalemate in Parliament. How, were those powers changed at that point, or did the president always have certain powers that we, you know, we Dr. were Rambasad, not aware of? Well, how do you see the presidency and, the, and his role and function at this time? Do, is there a need for change or for reform as to what he should be able to do or shouldn't be able to do? I find it very instructive that you're using the pronoun him and his. And yes, and sorry, he. I should, yes, and, and I I should, should say, say uh, her or the power that she would now have. And we should, yes. but in the Constitution, the Constitution is gender bias. The, the entire language of the Constitution refers to men and institutions. It talks about his, him, and he in re reference to office holders, all the office holders across the board, even in the service commissions, um, in the parliament, mm. uh, and in, in the presidency. Um, so certainly, I think one of the things that should be brought sharply into focus now that we c have a female head of state is to look into that aspect of the gender bias in the, quest in the Constitution. We have been trying to get some changes that in within that for a number of years. It's been tabled to constitution reform committees over and over again. Um, and this is a constitution made in 1962, revised in, in 1976, and with se several other revisions in between. Um, so now that we have a female president, I think it does bring sharply into focus the language of the constitution, one, and two, the implicit and, and uh, gender bias that is built in within, within not just the Constitution, but also within the system. When we're looking, I'm looking at the range of photographs that you're showing, there's gray, um, black, black and gray suits. And we hope that if a woman is gonna add some color to color. that one. <laughs> um, but in relation to, when, you, when we talk about power and uh, the notion of power and uh, um, how men and women handle power, um, for a long time in the gender movement in Trinidad, we have been championing put a woman put a woman in the house so the house of parliament now we have a woman in the house of the pre the president's house um, how would she interpret those powers does she bring to the office some different concept of what power is and how you wield power and you how you manipulate power dr gani just explained how the previous presidents worked their understanding and interpretation of the term power. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I think we would be looking at very keenly. How would Justice Paula May Weeks, um, as the first female president of Trinidad and Tobago, be interpreting power from, from a, maybe a gender and gendered perspective and pr of, of course also bringing in her experience of working in the system, of working in these institutions, the so-called men and institutions and, and, and how can she negotiate that space and make it more accessible to other women as well. Yes, and bring equity. Yeah. How do you think she could handle that, Dr. Gannon? Well, there is a, a, a debate about the use of gender neutral language in legal drafting. And I think that uh, more and more you are beginning to see um, that there has to be a response in, in this context um, because what Dr. Rampasad is raising is an issue of legal drafting and how the Constitution is actually drafted and the language of the Constitution as well as in other statutes. 
so that the, the, the issue of legal drafting and the use of gender neutral language is a debate that, that needs to be had. And I think that you know, societies are, are very far advanced that the traditional way of, 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 uh, of, of legal drafting has been to use he to cover she. And um, that I think in, in today's world of a different level of consciousness about gender bias, uh, I think that um, you know that is a debate that whose time has come, and um, I don't know if the Law Reform Commission of Trinidad and Tobago will be given such a mandate. But that is really for a political directive to come from the government to the, the Law Reform Commission, let us say, um, to to be able to start a process like that, or even to initiate a process whereby you begin to have legislation being drafted in that way or some kind of other corrective measures being taken to bring gender neutral language uh, to a new level right. in terms of public affairs. Mm -hmm. If I may also jump in here, uh, when we talk about language, um, it, you see it's also implicit and there's a kind of mindset, you know, um, and, and a cultural mindset and what is institutionalized in the country in terms of perceptions mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Um, in, in culture studies, we see language bears culture yes. and, and language transmits that culture of how we perceive men, the roles of men and women in society. So it really is a crucial point in terms, it's not just a matter of the, the of how it looks and, and how it's, rep it's, it's how it's represented right. and how we project in terms of what we are moving forward or moving into. Yes, huh? because, and I guess because most of these positions were always male dominated, but things are changing and evolving now. So that's where the change now has to come where you know there there is where women are now demanding equ equal treatment um yeah and but also aligned to that we i i think we have um and i would say it's tr we we pretty much welcome you know having a female president i if i might give you a little anecdote um my niece was like about 10 one day we were chatting and um i asked her what would you like to be when you grow up and uh at that time, um, President Hassan Ali had just come into office. Her, her sister was, had just started attending Naprima Girls High School. And um, Mrs. Hassan Ali, the first lady of the day, was f a, a, a student, which she was aspiring to go to that school as well. And she, she wanted to impress me. So she wants to be the, the, the leading woman in the country. And she said, oh, I would like to be the president's wife. <laughs> yeah. So so now we have we have lifted the bar well, a bit and, yes. and women and girls can aspire to be in the president. The president yes. and not just the president's and wife. <laughs> and hap right. So having said that, I mean so so there's a lot of joy and there is a, a um a lot of optimism in terms of now that it opens up the sphere in terms of expectations of women. But having done that, we who are working in terms of empowering women, and I think we've done a lot with that in terms of a lot of groundwork in terms of opening up the spaces or trying to open up the spaces for women to occupy. One of the, there's still a lot more work to be done in terms of how they now negotiate those positions, in terms of how they move within the sphere of that. And I think we've seen playing out in our own national community and elsewhere where the challenge, the, the, the challenge is, because now you're entering a sphere that is still pretty much, I wouldn't say male dominated, but the culture, more, more than being male dominated, it's the culture of the sphere. Is, is, is there's a certain mind, mindset that goes mm -hmm. with it. And how the women who are placed there, how they occupy that, that space and how they use it, um, it it's gonna be crucial. And when we look at the, the Constitution, for instance, in terms of how it sets up the role, and Dr. Ghani has described some of that, how the, the roles of the presidents, it's pretty much as, as um, almost a rubber stamp. Everything is done in terms of on the advice of the prime minister, mm -hmm. and there isn't much, much room for negotiating that. Mm -hmm. um, we are empowering women to not become the chorus girls and uh, the, the cheerleaders of, of, of other male leaders and that mm -hmm. kind of orientation. So how she carved out that space is very crucial and, she, and, and you know, what we'll be looking at. We have seen challenges to other women who have held leadership positions and, and there isn't, you know, not the adequate support systems and uh, that kind of thing that would help strengthen their mm -hmm. roles and in terms of what they want to do with carving out that. So, um, it's going to be very challenging, I think, um, of how you negotiate that space 
not become a chorus girl of the existing system and, and, and just a backup cheerleader, part of a cheerleading team. Um, and that we have seen in terms of the bravado that um, Dr. Ghani was talking about, the President Robinson's move, um, pr President Carmona's speech. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they've all had to, as we say, boil down like Baji, right? Yes. <laughs> um, so what's, wha how, how is Justice Polomi Weeks going to use that space? to one project maybe to change is she going to use it to change how the, how the perception and the role is of the president is or to just become that kind of chorus girl or um is she going to challenge i mean how how is, is she going to challenge the space or and and lift it or, or get her colleagues to lift the expectations of the yes. space as okay. well we welcome back and that was a brief insight into president-elect madam paula may weeks well Dr. Kani, we were talking about um, the, the president-elect being able to utilize that space. How is she going to utilize that space? And how is she going to um, carve the way for other women to achieve? Now, uh, Prime Minister uh, Dr. Keith Rowley, in his address to the Electoral College, had uh, saw her appointment and achievements as a signal to young people that they can also be the best they can be. Is how much of her, where she is and what she has achieved, will be in fact that kind of example to young people, to young women in particular, that listen, the stars are the limit, it, you know, you, the sky is the limit. Yes, I can, I can achieve just as much as anybody else. Um, we'll want to see what uh, Madam Justice Paula May Weeks will be like. So every president has their own style in how they discharge the functions of the office and how they carry themselves um, with the, the powers that they have. So I'll start with the inaugural address, and then we'll see how she conducts herself in office, because mm -hmm. every president is going to have their style. Yes. Yes. Dr. Rampasad, how do you see her role now being much of a, an exemplar to young women? Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be challenging for her. I, I, I have to say that. Because when if we look, survey the landscape in terms of the president's past, and the, 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 the president, apart from well, the first two with Sir Ellis Clark and Justice Noor Hassan Ali, um, we see in, in terms of when, when, when there were challenges in terms of law. And, and, and we know that that's her area of expertise, and it's been almost a singular focus mm -hmm. for her entire career. Uh, it, it, it hasn't been that where, where, where the strongman lawyer approach has, has been used within the space of the presidency have not very been very successful. Mm -hmm. So for some, re for some reason, I, I think that uh, she would need to have to revisit approaches and really look at, l survey what, what's happening. When we look at, um, the f for instance, the last, the, the two first ladies that we've had who's made a significant difference to the sphere, which was um, Lady Hassan Ali mm -hmm. and Dr. Jean Richards. Um, I, I think in a lot of ways, they lifted the stature of the presidency. And she, in some of public interviews, has said, you know, she doesn't, she, she, she doesn't have that advantage of having the, yeah. the two for the price of one kind of package, <laughs> yes, you know, a, pre yeah. a president's wife in, in, uh, in, in, on the wings. So, uh, and she, she also mentioned, and I think it, in, in looking at how, 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 do, how, how do women carve this space? And, and we have, I mean, when we, when we train women leaders and, and have these discussions in, in our discussion groups and things like that, um, it, we, we cannot undervalue the tea ceremonies <laughs> <laughs> and the cocktail parties. Yes. We have seen, and we, uh, we have seen how women can use these spaces, in fact, to carve out very, very progressive pathways for, for legislation, for policy, for all kinds of social, so social change. Yeah. And uh, there are very important kinds of mechanisms. So maybe in terms of style, she, she, she would need to examine, I mean, what kind of style she's going to adopt. Is it going to be the hard and fast legal position that you've mm -hmm. had? I think she's been very much cocooned in a way because as a, as, 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 a, as a judge, you are in a kind of a fraternity. There are things like contempt of court, that people mm -hmm. can't step outside certain kinds of bounds. Dr. Hamid mentioned social media. Now you're open game. You draw before, and it's a different environment. Um, uh, it, it, it's open game in terms of social media. And I, I have to say that none of our public figures 
have demonstrated that they understand how to deal with this beast. Mm -hmm. um, and Justice Paula Mewicks, coming from the background that she have, and I think it's been fairly cocooned. You, you, you protected as a right. justice. Mm -hmm. Here you're not, mm -hmm. and that's going to be challenging. Mm -hmm. She, one of the things that she actually pointed out that is going to be of immediate concern to her is youth and crime. Um, and she, as she said, with her career in criminal law, she cannot fail but to be concerned with young people and what position they will occupy in society. She seems to be quite concerned about that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, you know, that will be uh, something that she can communicate to the prime minister in the weekly meetings. And um, I, I, I don't know that, um, you know, she doesn't strike me as the kind of person who will come out and make public pronouncements on public policy to challenge the executive, mm -hmm. uh, which, which perhaps was a trend that started to develop uh, in, in terms of, of the presidency because the office of the president bears no political responsibility. That is a matter for the executive. So that um, I don't want to prejudge how she's going to handle it, um, but she has spoken about uh, some of the things that she is concerned about, and those are two items. Um, so I think it may start, first of all, with the private discussions with the prime minister on a weekly basis. And... Um, whenever she's required to consult the leader of the opposition with respect to certain positions and appointments and so on, some of that discussion may, may, may come up. Uh, I, I would say it probably goes a little beyond policy and law. As we have seen in many ways, those have, have been failing us. Policy, we have policies that are being flouted, we have laws that are being flouted. And looking at the, the whole issue of, of youth and crime, um, when, I, when, when, when I look at how in terms of women, we, we, we look at women as the bearers of culture. And I have, or I've had an ongoing, in fact, my ongoing preoccupation is that if it is that we have women occupying more and more spaces, why, why isn't change happening much faster? Um, and is it that even though, well, they, we, women are carrying, I think, the burden of, um, the, the burden of tradition and culture and replicating those, that, that culture. And I think that that's one of the, the issues we have in terms of like when we think about denting domestic violence, for instance, mm -hmm. we have so many women in very empowered positions, independent, earning their own income, um, Hollywood stars and singers yeah. and what have you, and they're still battered and they stay in battered relationships and they return to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do, we, how do we change this fear? And, and if it is that women are the bearers of culture, and, and, and you, you have within, within us the capacity for cultural change. Why isn't it happening? Um, so so it, it, it goes beyond what we're doing about policy and what we're doing about law and more about what we're doing to change our environment and to change our expectations and our mindset and, and, and you know how, how we carve out that space where young people can see themselves in, a, in, in another light. Than, than rather, you know, in, in terms of the gangsterism, in terms of a sense of hopelessness, a lack of a sense of future and that kind of thing. So it's really shaping that space and that kind of the, the, the projection of, of how do we create a kind of environment that make young people feel a sense of hope as well. And what can she do as, um, as president of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago? What are some of the things that she may be able to do outside the sphere of the, the legal aspects and so on, to bring about that change, um, especially with young people and young women? If we look, I would say in terms of one of our, our best practice examples, um, when we look at the send-off we had for Max Richards, for instance. Max Richards was a trin trinity born. And I think that's what, that's what this country need more than anything else. We need people to show that kind of commitment to nation first, rather than self or office or party or, or any of those things, or your, or, your, or your boys club or the girls club or, mm -hmm. or that kind of thing. We need, tr we need trainees first of all. Um, and th that, that would spark, I remember that Kamona's first speech, that, mm -hmm. that sparked so much, people were looking forward to see him now so much hope. implement this, mm -hmm. you, know, you know? Because it is kind of, there are things that need to be done, and we need to find a way to do it beyond the sphere of what, what, what the instruments before, before us think. I, th I, th I think a lot of what's within the Constitution, in a way, disempowers the society, it disempowers all the offices. You hear the Prime Minister talking about, oh, he has no powers to do this. And if, if the people at the highest level are 
are talking and championing disempowerment, where does that leave for the youth? Um, it, uh, she, in terms of how she project that role and how she engage the rest of the population, youth, women, men, you know, all, all the, and, and I, especially to the, that, that this challenge that we have of a very diverse society, a multicultural diverse society where everybody's looking for a piece of a pie and everybody feels disempowered. Everybody feels yeah. another group has won over them. It's a very challenging environment, but that is where I think, first of all, you have to be a trainee and you have to show that it's nation first above everything else. What do you think? I mean, I know that you said, Dr. Ghani, we will have to wait and see, mm -hmm. you know, coming out of her inauguration speech, what's the direction that she's planning to take. But just on the face of it, what do you think, um, and when you first heard that she um, had, had been selected as the, as the new president, what immediately did you think that she brings to the table, she would bring to the table and bring to the presidency? And I, I think one of the elements of the diversity that we, we, we take for granted and we don't explore and, and, and try to understand is that relationship between Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And we have seen too a lot of the, the grand charge and underground standing we've had with President Robinson, who came from Tobago, yes. and now our current prime minister, who also is a Tobagonian. Um, the, the sense of small island space and, and, and um, the sense of marginalization that, that, that comes from, fr fr from, from let's say, we, we, we're the smaller of the two, we've always been, you know, like the, the little Big sister, the, little sister. Well, it's not even a little sister, it's like the, it, it's like the, <laughs> the, the, the surrogate sister or something, you know, <laughs> the adopted sister. So, so yes, equal in that relationship. It's, it's been one of the challenges of the diversity we haven't fully explored. Um, along with uh, all the other elements, the rural, the rural communities, you know, we still have rural communities in Trinidad for mm -hmm. small islands that, that ought to be very highly developed. We have very, we have areas that are largely neglected and remote, and there's a different kind of culture that comes out of this area as well, yeah. in, se in themes of the sense of being alienated and being marginalized. We have to look at those. Um, and we've spoken about, of course, the gender issue as well. So. Yeah. It, before we end, and time is, yeah, mm -hmm. I can't believe how, how fast mm -hmm. time has gone by. What would you say of uh, the legacies that would have been left behind that President um, elect uh, Paula May Weeks could uh, capitalize on to a former presidents? I, I think the discussion of controversial matters behind closed doors, because when people see their presidents and their prime ministers and their chief justice and others, out in the public domain in this kind of confrontational way, it is not very good imaging for the state, and it is something that perhaps she may want to address as yeah. she assumes office. Okay. Dr. Rampasar? Yeah. In terms of imaging, yeah, um, certainly, uh, I think maybe one of the things she'd probably want to look at, in it, given it's, it's so challenging, is the social media issue. We have seen how, in fact, um, President Kamuna presidency was almost pulled down by social media because mm -hmm. he didn't, I think, and it's probably because he didn't know how to engage with the system yeah. and how he respond. I have seen in terms of, like, for example, that's one of the first interviews that was made public with her, that she also seems to need some, you know, um, guidance. Understanding, okay. understanding and guidance in, in terms of, of how you negotiate social media because it is the future. I think none of our heads have shown that they understand how this demon works or how to, to use it or how to, to utilize it in terms of for, for national development. Uh, and there are many ways in which we can do that. Yeah. So certainly, and that is going to be crucial to her imaging. Yes, I, 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 I think you're absolutely right because even sometimes in the workplace, we still we don't understand how we or social media ought to function. And yes, at the level of the presidency, certainly that would, she would need some guidance there. Um, any closing comments, Dr. Ghani? Well, just to say that I, I wish the new president well. Uh, she embarks on her term of office. She has um, many challenges in front of her. And um, I, I think that um, I'm confident that she has the demeanor and the personality uh, and the um, mental fortitude to be able to address the challenges that are going to face her. Yeah, Dr. Rampasad? I think, um, yes, we wish her well, and she has a lot of well-wishers out there who are looking to support her. Um, she needs to, un to, to carve out, you know, have a support system and utilize that. It's not an easy space to occupy. 
um, it's also not easy to be, you know, breaking new ground as well without a kind of support system in place. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to really good things coming out from <laughs> Madam President. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ghani. Thank you, Dr. Rampasad, for spending time with us this morning, helping us to better understand the role and functions of the President and, of course, looking ahead to what's to come with Madam President. <laughs>